All right, hello guys. In this video, we're going to be talking about a heat wave that's going to be coming to the eastern United States. We've talked about this in a few videos. Uh, most recently, our weekly forecast, we mentioned that there would be a heat wave coming for the eastern United States. And I'm going to go ahead and break that down for you guys, showing you the temperatures compared to normal and also the temperatures you can expect for every location in the United States. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask you to do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now let's get right into things. First things we're looking at are teleconnections. I just want to show you a little bit of the reasons behind why we're seeing this heat wave for the eastern United States. You can see that the Arctic Oscillation here, according to the GFS, is going to be going positive for you know the next few days, probably the next week, from, from the 9th until about the 16th, we're going to be dealing with a positive AO. I also want to take notice that after that point, it does go negative and goes pretty far negative, actually, by the 18th, about two, two points below. So, I mean, we're going to be dealing with a pretty negative AO after this is all said and done. Now, the thing with teleconnections is usually there's a bit of a lag for what we feel in the United States. So even though it goes negative by the 16th, we probably wouldn't feel that until about maybe the 18th or 19th. That's how it usually goes with that. Also, looking at our PNA, this one actually is the opposite of the AO. You want to see this one go positive for colder temperatures and negative for warmer temperatures in the eastern United States. And you can see we're already in a little bit of a negative, but it's going to go very far negative by the 15th there. And then again, after about the 16th, you can see this one goes positive as well. So this seems to be the trend. And the NAO, this is the one we made a video on in our last Winter Thoughts video. And you can see... This one's going to go positive. It works a lot like the AO where positive means warmer in the east and negative means colder in the east. We're going to see it go positive until, you guessed it, about the 16th and then it's going to go negative after that point. So I'm looking at that 15th through 17th time frame for a potential pattern change coming up. Obviously, we're dealing with the pattern change right now and we're going to be in a warmer pattern for at least the next week. But... Again, that I'm looking at about, I would say, the 15th through the 20th to see a big change in the pattern once again. Somewhere in that time frame, obviously, the confidence isn't super high, but we are looking at the potential for a you know big, big, big pattern change around that point with the teleconnections completely flipping after that point. Now, we're going to be looking at our temperatures comparatively to normal according to the GFS. And we're going to be looking at the 18Z for each of these days, every day that the heat wave is going to be around, at least. And the 18Z is about, the, it's approximately the high temperature. That's around the time of day when we would see the high temperature, it's sometime in the late afternoon. So it is going to be some, you know, with some variabilities, the highest temperature of your day, with some exceptions for some areas. Now you can see starting off today, we are dealing with colder than normal temperatures for the northern United States as a whole and the western United States as a whole. A little bit of warmth there in the southeastern United States for the 9th, and we will be dealing with this. I think this is the beginning of the heat wave, actually, and we are going to be dealing with this throughout the next week, like I said. Moving on to 18Z Tuesday, you can see this is expanding a bit northward and that cold is retreating back into Canada. We do see that cold still there for the western United States and that looks to be the trend as all those teleconnections I showed before are all looking favorable for colder in the west for at least the next week. So you guys are going to be dealing with a big cool down and again I mentioned that in the weekly forecast, uh, what was that, just yesterday. So again, warm expanding northward, moving on to Wednesday. We see that heat still intensifying there for the eastern United States, that cool down intensifying for the west. And actually what we are going to see around the 12th or 13th, as you will see, there will be somewhat of a cool down here for the central United States and the northeast very briefly within this heat wave. But it's going to be very short lived and not very noticeable in the grand scheme of things. So we're moving on to the 12th, and you can see the, the warmth is actually retreating a little bit further south, and we do have a day where, again, Michigan, Wisconsin, and New England is going to be below average. But, uh, and, and as we move on to the 13th, we do see that intensify even more Minnesota, Iowa. It looks like we're having a big trough there in the eastern United States. It looks pretty cold, too. It looks as though this would be the end to this heat wave, but you thought wrong as we're moving on to the 14th. This is Saturday, September 14th. Uh, we see that warmth regaining ground there, moving north once again. We do still see some cold temperatures there for New England, Michigan, 
some of those areas, but it is starting to warm up. And by the 15th, you can see we go full blown heat wave here, central United States, southwestern United States, eastern United States, with the exception of some of those Gulf states. Don't know how accurate that is, though. Uh, but really the only cold areas here is the Gulf states, a little bit of those four corner states, and then the northwestern United States as well. Everywhere else is dealing with a lot of warmth on the 15th. Now 16th, again, this is the day that the teleconnections are switching according to this model, but again, it does lag behind. So we're not going to see those effects switch immediately. That's when the teleconnections look to switch into a more favorable for cold in the east, but we will see that lag just a bit as the heat wave still is looking very, very strong here for the central United States, especially New England and the Great Lakes states as we're dealing with a lot of those pinks, which is where we're about 12 degrees above average. So very, very warm comparatively to normal. This will be very, very noticeable. And it's going to go down as, you know, another September heat wave. We've been dealing with this for so many years where we have a warm September uh, for a majority of the country, and it looks like uh, we could be dealing with some warmth here, at least for a portion here. At least the middle third of the month looks to be, you know, warm in general. Uh, we're going to move on to the 17th, and you can see still, you know, this extreme heat for the New England states. Some of those Rockies getting involved now, but really the central United States and New England is the warmest on the 17th. We're already approaching 200 hours out, so the accuracy does go down a little bit, but it, I don't see any signs on any of the models of the of the the heat wave dying by this point, as the GFS at least has the teleconnection switching. Some of the other models are a little more iffy with it. I saw that the European was a little bit weaker, but did have a similar switch in the teleconnections. So there is some consistency. It's just the strength of the actual switch is what's a big question mark, but that is a big deal. Now we're going to move on to the 18th and you can see this cool temperatures there for kind of the Alberta, Montana, North Dakota area. We do see this big amount of cool temperatures and for the entire West Coast we are dealing with these cooler than normal temperatures. Interior New England is a little bit average or below average there by this point. But in the central United States and the eastern United States we're dealing with big time heat still on the 18th Wednesday um, and, and by... Thursday, it's evident that this cooler air is moving eastward very rapidly, and it's going to be a very massive cooldown, actually, if the teleconnections switch as abruptly as the GFS is showing. We can see these cooler temperatures overtaking the Dakotas and Nebraska, moving eastward. East of there, though, we're still dealing with the same amount of heat on the 19th, Thursday, September 19th, but... By the 20th, again, another big click eastward, and it's evident that we have a big cooldown coming in for the east by this point. Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, and some of those uh, western Great Lakes are feeling it by this point. Then you can see by the 21st, already reaching the Appalachian Mountains. By this point, Mississippi as well, so very, very cool temperatures. And this looks a lot like what my September forecast was calling for. The first third of the month looks really good for my September forecast. Middle middle of the month, 10th through the 20th, I'd say. Doesn't look like it's correlating too much with my forecast, but obviously it wasn't going to look like my forecast the entire month. And then the ending half, or the ending third, well... It's kind of looking like it could possibly correlate with my forecast quite nicely. So I'm, I'm feeling quite confident with my September forecast still to this point. I feel really good about it. Moving on to the 22nd, and you can see it's moved fully east. All of those Gulf states are being engulfed by this cold. And Pennsylvania into your northeast. And after this point, it just actually, I didn't show it, but it's going to have it overtaking the entire east coast. Uh, this cooldown, and then we see kind of more cooldowns after this point and just this consistent troughing in the east to close out the month. The CFS actually has something very, very similar, and then a very cold October. So we're going to have to keep an eye on this. This could be a pattern switch that you know persists through some of the rest of the fall, at least into October. So we're going to have to keep a close eye on this one if we do see these teleconnections continue to show more favorable for cold conditions towards the end of the month that could carry well into October and we could be dealing with a much different October than last year where we had warmer than average temperatures to begin things uh, it could be a completely different story this year so we'll have to keep an eye on that as we approach October it's gonna be a very interesting month nevertheless now we're gonna be looking at your actual temperature Fahrenheit here because I wanted to show you guys just what kind of effects you could be feeling now here's the 11th so this is Wednesday September 11th 
Uh, obviously, we're going to be mourning the loss of all of those affected or, you know, that passed away during 9-11 and all of those affected by 9-11. We're going to have our thoughts and prayers involved with that. But it does look to be a very, very warm day there for the southeastern United States, Gulf states, Texas, you know, 90s, mid 90s, upper 90s, some areas like South Carolina, I see some upper 90s. So it is going to be quite a hot day. Now, moving on to September 12th, you can see we have kind of a similar story. I do see 101 popping up there for Virginia. So very, very hot here for mid-September for a lot of these areas. Not unheard of, but very, very hot. And it's the same story on Friday the 13th as well. Um, you know, just kind of warm in the similar areas. Uh, some of those Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, we're seeing 100 degree temperatures. And then you could see by the 16th, this is when things get crazy. We're seeing upper 80s there for northern Michigan. Very, very warm temperatures for this time of year for those Great Lakes states as well as New England. Upper 90s for a lot of those areas, which is, that's very abnormal for these areas by the 16th. 17th, you can see the New England coast dealing with 90s there in Boston, Rhode Island, uh, Connecticut, coastal Maine. Very, very warm temperatures for September 17th for New England if this verifies. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We're going to be bringing further updates on the pattern as we head into the fall months. Obviously, I will, if we do have this pattern switch where the cooldown happens, I will be needing to make a video on that within the next five days. Just talking about the cooldown that we could be seeing as we approach closer to those teleconnections switching, we'll have a much better idea. Also, over the next two days, it might even be today, uh, fingers crossed, I'm going to be bringing out my third winter forecast, so be on the lookout for that one as I'm going to be making that just after this video gets uploaded. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next video.